So put your price up. Put your price up to whatever you want. I don't care. Put it as high as you like, Tim. It doesn't matter, mate. But let people have an open choice where if they choose no, Hi, it's me again, and some good news about TV licensing. Well, not for TV licensing anyway, but it says here, the number of people who are paying for the TV license has increased. Good, everything we're doing here is working. Let's take a look at this story, shall we? According to the BBC, the number of people who said they no longer need a TV license has increased by 180,000 people in the past year. So this is why I advise people to do the no license needed forms you know, to tell them you don't require a license because we need to get that number as big as possible because that's where the movement is. People who are just blanking it and not telling them they're classed as unlicensed and it won't feature in these figures. So if you're able to, if they know who you are anyway, do tell them you don't require a television license. And the bigger this number gets, the more power the movement gets. That's the way I look at it. Anyway, let's carry on. However, when BBC officers undertook home visits to talk to those who said they don't need a licence, they found that 1 in 12 did need a licence. Two interesting points there. 1 in 12 isn't a very high percentage, is it? How are all these capita goons getting their commission? Only 1 in 12 did need a licence. And the other point is, how did they find out that that 1 in 12 needed a TV licence? They must have questioned them on the doorstep, stitched them up, or the person must have let them in. If you don't talk to them, how can they possibly know that it should be zero in 12? Because if you get a visit from one of these people, you should say, no, thank you, close the door in their face, and they'll have to go away. They don't have a choice about it. Then that would be zero in 12, wouldn't it? That's what I'm fighting for, zero in 12. These figures were given as a testimony by BBC officials today, along with data about the over 75's TV licence figures and the TV licence price increases, which, according to the BBC, are way behind what people are willing to pay for the service. Oh, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. The price increase is behind what people are willing to pay for the service. In other words, they're saying, maybe I'm reading this wrong, but they're trying to say, the BBC officials, that people are willing to pay more than what the current licence fee is to support the BBC. Really? I don't think, I've met one person that would like to pay more for anything. Odd. Earlier this year, it was revealed that 1.7 million people declined to have a TV licence in 2020. A yeah, pretty big number, I like it, I like it. That's not people who are caught without a licence, but people who actively said they don't need one. Fantastic. According to Lee Tavasiva, the BBC's Chief Operating Officer, that number increased by about 180,000 over the last year. Good! There is a range of reasons why people do that, she said. It is a number that we care deeply about, understanding why people say they no longer need a licence. Maybe just read the comments on some of these videos and every possible reason why someone doesn't want a TV licence will be listed below in the comments, Lee. Why not take a little look at that rather than just wondering about it? As part of trying to understand that number, the TV licensing body can send officers to people who said they no longer need a licence, and in some cases, one in 12, found that a licence was still needed. Why? I'd never understand why they feel the need to send someone to my house to confirm something I've told you. I've gone to the effort to tell you I don't require a television licence, and now you're sending someone to my house to double check on that. No, no, I don't want your service, and I especially don't want someone knocking on my door. You're not welcome here. I don't understand that. Isn't that the oddest thing ever? According to Tim Davey, the BBC's Director General, who's just had a tasty pay rise, I know it doesn't say that, I must have thrown that in for fun. A lot of those who say they no longer need a licence come back after a year, possibly because of some new BBC content they're now interested in. I don't dispute that that's probably some truth in that, that some people do miss watching broadcast TV or missing something, and they do come back to pay for a licence, or they go away for a while and cancel it, like my mum used to do six months a year in a holiday home in a foreign country, a horrible foreign country that I won't mention. And um, she cancelled it and then restarted again when she came back. No, she does that anymore, she sold the house. Netflix, Spotify and Apple had price rises of 20 to 30% this year, he said. We've gone up 1% and we're down 30% in real sums to 2010. When you ask people what they would pay for the BBC, we're well ahead of the £13. We're not asking to go well ahead of that, but we need to make sure we're not stripping this service. 
This also relates to the number brought up by the BBC earlier this year that said that if the TV licence was to be replaced by a BBC subscription model, the cost to the viewer would be £37 a month. Yeah, but what they're failing to mention there is that if it was replaced by a subscription service, that you wouldn't have to pay or be made to feel that you need to pay or have someone knock on your door to try and sell you the £37 a month subscription. You can pay it or you cannot pay it or you can go in month by month, however you want to do it. And if you want to charge £37 a month, you want to charge £137 a month. It doesn't matter because people can choose at that point whether they want to subscribe to your service or not. And the problem here is people feel they have to subscribe to your service. They feel like they have to. They're scared of getting the letters. They're scared of getting knocks on the door. So put your price up. Put your price up to whatever you want. I don't care. Put it as high as you like, Tim. It doesn't matter, mate. But let people have an open choice where if they choose no, you don't send people round to demand money with menaces. So what do you think about this story? I'm seeing more and more stories like this where the numbers are going up. And I say I do recommend you do the no license needed form. If they already have your details, it's not going to hurt. If you want to cancel your television license and they know who you are, a quick phone call or doing the form online, when it works, which isn't often at the moment, to be fair, and telling them you no longer require a license. They will give you an exemption for two years. It will cut down on the worst of the scary letters. In two years, they'll remind you and you can either renew it or not. And uh, yeah, you still might get a visit. If you live in a town, you stand a fair chance of getting a visit. I'm out here in the sticks and you know I'm not in a very big village. So they've got to send someone out like an hour each way in a car using their own petrol to get a door slammed in their face. I think that's why I don't get any visits anymore. Or they know where I am and they're scared because I've got like six cameras at the front of my property as well. So I'd get nice footage of the whole thing. I don't know. But yeah, please do think about it. If they already have your details, doing the no license needed form doesn't hurt. If you're getting letters addressed to the present occupier or homeowner, whatever, don't do the no license needed form because you will need to give them your personal details. And you don't really want them having them if you don't have to give them to them, do you? But if you're cancelling your TV license, they know who you are. So doing a proper no license needed form is fine. And it does add to the numbers. It gives them a bigger number to look at and it makes our movement more powerful. So I do recommend that you do it. What do you think of this story? Do you think they're fudging the numbers? Would you pay 37 quid a month for the BBC? Or would you pay 137 quid a month for the BBC? I wouldn't pay any, but at least it'd be optional, wouldn't it? Let me know in the comments below. We'll have a bit of a chat about it. I'm often hovering down there, so you'll see me. And while you're down there, leaving your comment, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, all the stuff that people on bloody YouTube say. I don't even know why I say it at the end of the video. I don't agree with saying it, but I say it because... I think you have to if you're on YouTube, don't you? I don't know. But go and do that, and I'll see you in another video again soon. Thank you for watching.